All right, so I want to talk a bit about soccer. As you can see, I'm probably wearing a Nigeria jersey. Um, my background, as I always say, born and raised in Nigeria, and growing up soccer was and is the number one sport. Um, most people play it, and I grew up playing soccer for fun. You know, um, in the village, we'd play with everything from mangoes to oranges to those little balls that you find in the toilet. Um, in boarding school, we take rocks and, you know, when you're home, you go to birthday parties and when the balloons pop or when the party's over, I would go and pop the balloons and take them, stash them, and I would just take a rock and, you know, I, I use those popped balloons to wrap them around rocks just to make a ball that I can play with. And so that's how, you know, deep soccer is. Everyone plays um, and we play for fun. We play for the love. And it was just something we did, you know, with or without shoes. That's some just something we do. You know, we love soccer. So um, my, my father is a very avid soccer player. I would go play with my father, his friends, and, you know, uh, through that, got the attention of some of the uh, Nigerian Football Federation uh, in terms of the youth national teams and started getting involved in that. And then I moved to America. I never thought soccer, I never ever thought about soccer as like a career thing. Like when I grow up, I want to be a soccer player. No. Uh, that wasn't really my dream. Um, uh, when I came to the United States, I remember on lunch, you know, like I've said in other videos, you know, uh, the, the, the 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 black community in America wasn't, um, they're, they're not as much into soccer. They're more into basketball and American football. So I found an attachment to the Hispanic community because they were the ones that I saw during lunch playing soccer and that's what I wanted to do. So I started tapping into that, got invited to, you know, come out and try out for the summer with this, with my high school's soccer team, um, played for the summer, got invited to, to, to stay on the team. And I remember being so excited. We got the first bag of jerseys. Um, at that point, I thought I was a professional soccer player. Okay. Because we got a bag, it was Adidas bag, and it had these jerseys in there that had the school name on it, and it had more than one set. You had the black kit and you had the white kit. I thought I was a pro soccer player at that point, you know? That's how excited I was. So, you know, uh, needless to say, soccer was just always something that I did for fun. Now, I started playing more in high school, you know, I started getting invited to play for different clubs. I had no clue what the American soccer system was, you know, um, no clue. My parents are just as much immigrants as I am. We all moved here around the same time. Um, but I was the first to really experience this uh, phenomenon, if you will, or uh, these opportunities with what sports can do for you from high school to college to the pros. And that's kind of how it works in, in the United States. But I wasn't aware of that. My family wasn't aware of that. You know, I was just, this was just something to keep me busy, keep me out of trouble, um, keep me around friends um, that I was trying to make and just assimilate and adapt to this new community. So that's what soccer was for me. Now, as I continued playing in club and in high school, more attention was brought to the opportunities of potentially going to college through a scholarship for the sport. So I started going out and training with different colleges and different clubs. And for me, I just wanted to be around friends and just have a good time. That's all I knew on the weekends. We'd go to tournaments, eat Subway, you know, that it was just fun. Okay. Um, and then, um, and obviously my senior year, actually in my junior year is when I started, you know, training with colleges and seeing 
and he started to get certain offers, like, you know, um, from different parts of the coast. I didn't want to leave California because it was just too cold <laughs> in other places. Uh, I hate playing soccer um, in the freezing cold. So, you know, I, I, I prefer the heat. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the opportunities with soccer became real once I started getting college, college scholarships offers. And so um, I explored a few of those. I still didn't really understand what it was, you know, really how deep it was and how much of a business it is. And then I got to college and started performing there. And I heard about professional soccer tryouts and I explored a few of those, went to some professional tryouts. And from there, that's kind of where my whole professional soccer career, if you will, started. So now, even though those opportunities were real and um, I do have the, the gift or talent of playing the sport and the opportunities there were very real, I have over the years had to deal with is soccer a, a true passion of mine or is it just a hobby? Now, I, I've gone pretty far in, in, in soccer, you know, like I said, to the professional realms. I've, um, I started out with a tryout with the Chicago Fire, uh, which is the major league soccer team in Chicago. And I flew out there for an open tryout. Um, and performed well, got an offer there. And from that point, um, Chicago was just too cold for me. Okay. So I decided to come back to California and came back to California and got the opportunity to play with the Los Angeles Galaxy, uh, which I did. So that obviously opened a lot of doors and opened my eyes to the opportunities that could be. Um, however, at that time, I quickly learned that unless you're David Beckham at the time, who was getting paid a lot of money or you went to a top D1 school, which I didn't go to. I just stayed local despite all the opportunities. I just I didn't I didn't understand it. OK, so I just kind of took what was convenient. All right. And um, it wasn't a D1 school. So, you know, that's part of why I chose to go the open tryout route because the opportunity to get seen by professional scouts is often just done in a, it's very political. It's a business. So you have to go to the right school in order to get looked by the right people and get the right connections to get you on the right professional teams. That wasn't my route. My route was open tryouts. I would go to open tryouts and I would try out with 500 other people in hopes of getting that call or getting selected. So that's what I did in Chicago, the Chicago Fire. That's what I did with the Sounders, uh, Seattle Sounders. Um, and that's what I did with the Galaxy. You know, uh, So that's been my professional soccer career route. Okay, And playing with the Galaxy, like I said, opened a lot of doors, opened my eyes to a lot of opportunities, obviously got me more attention than what I did get at the, the college level. And, you know, that, that, that was the start of it. So I, I left professional soccer for a very long time. Um, one, because the, at the time the, the offers and the pay wasn't that good. Professional soccer wasn't what it was then as it is now. Um, definitely, certainly not in terms of pay. And if you're going to live in an area that has a high cost of living like California, then your pay kind of has to match up. Um, and quite frankly, I lost the passion um, because at that point it became more of a business and it just wasn't there for me. And it wasn't something that for me, I always, I never, I never thought of this as like a career path. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life kind of thing. Uh, it was just something I was great at. And um, it, it's, it's very therapeutic for me. So, um, I decided to step away from it. Uh, so, is it a passion or is it a hobby? 
right? That's something I've I've debated for a while, and uh, because I've I've been thinking about the possibilities of going back into the professional soccer realm. I've played locally to the highest levels, and I know I can go take it a step further. But the question is: Is soccer a hobby, or is it a passion? Something that I should pursue as um, professionally as a career. Well, I will say that uh, something as I've been thinking about for a while, like I said, um, I've realized, you know, I, I love the sport. Um, my, my dad is an avid player, very passionate about it. And um, I realized the potential and the opportunities that I could take on in, in going that route, um, yet I still, what I've, I've come to discover is I, I truly enjoyed the sport, the love of playing the game, the love of, uh, it's very therapeutic for me going out there and giving it my all, giving it my heart. I play, I play hard, I play with obvious passion, you know, um, but on the business side of things, you know, once once it starts becoming a job, then you lose the passion, and it definitely affects the way you play. I've seen this over and over and over again with, with several people and several players. You know, you you play, and you can see that once it starts becoming a job for them, and the pressures of performing and the politics, then they lose their passion, and it hundred percent affects the way they play. Um, I stepped away from it for a while because it definitely affected the way I played. I realized that, you know, it, it was no longer a the excitement of just, oh, I can't wait to go out there and put on some cleats and, you know, kick the ball around. But it became more of a, like, a job. Like, oh, I got to do this again. And that's not something I wanted. So I stepped away from it. But I realized that. You know, at this point, I don't mind soccer being a hobby for me because I enjoy it more as a hobby. And that's why I play. I play because I love the sport um, and I love everything it does for me. It, it on, on the soccer field, it uh, doesn't matter what the color of my skin is. doesn't matter nothing. Performance is performance and I perform. And that's the bottom line. And I play with that joy. It's that spirit that uh, I lost years ago that made me step away. And it's that spirit that I feel like I've regained and enjoy playing with again. So I don't need to get paid to play soccer. I never growing up was paid to play soccer. All the kids you see, you know, where I'm from, they don't get paid to play. We just play for the love. We play for for the love of it, you know, we, we have deep connections, we enjoy it. The joy it brings us, it makes us forget about the worries everywhere else that we have. So that's the therapy we have, and that's why I play soccer, you know. Um, so I don't, I don't mind not playing for, you know, the, the money and, um, I just enjoy playing for the love, for the joy. Uh, but put me on any field, anywhere, any time, any day, I play with the best of them. And I think at this point, I've done enough to prove that. <laughs> you know, I don't think there's any question or should be any questions about my ability to play at a professional level. Um, I just choose not to because I find more joy in playing for the fun, for the love. And if that means having to play it just as a hobby, then that's what it is. You know, it's a, it's a great hobby. One that, you know, my father is, what, close to 60? He still plays <laughs> competitively. So, um, and mind you, my dad's had cancer for, you know, well over 15 years. And I believe that's one of the things that has kept him alive. This is from going to, going from having a few months to live uh, to, you know, uh, over 15 plus years, you know, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's my rant on soccer 
and having to play as a hobby or professionally, um, I don't mind playing soccer for the rest of my life as a hobby. And that's what it is.